Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Replay Retro. This week, we're just about 100 miles away from the studio and we're here in Spalding in Lincolnshire to visit Martin Murphy, owner of GameLink, here in Spalding. So let's go and check it out and see what this shop is all about. Right, so this is Martin, owner of GameLink, and he's going to show us around the shop now. So, Martin, take it away. Okay, so as you come in, I'll just here. Three 16-in-1 arcade machines, they're all 20 pence a play, so we're not, we're not ripping anyone off here. We've got all the classics like Donkey Kong, Space Invaders, pretty much my, most of the ones that you can play with one button that, from the 80s, so nothing like Defender. But, um, so yeah, they're, they're quite popular in the shop. We've got uh, Neo Geo, and well, most of them are Neo Geo games, but uh, a lot of the Street Fighters on here as well, 100 odd games on this one. doesn't get played as much as the old one, the old ones over there. But uh, we sometimes have a bit of a go on Street Fighter. And you turn around to here, and we've got our, our, our Nintendo section, the Super Nintendo cartridge on the top. Right at the top there, we've got Chrono Trigger, nice box mint, and um, um, Secret of Mana 3 for the Super Famicom. Um, a lot of box Super Nintendo stuff here. Obviously, there's not a great deal of space, so we do have more stuff than the, than is on the shelf. But um, we just try and get the. Uh, the best titles we can out on the shelf, so the sports stuff sort of stays out. Then further down the N64, again a couple of shelves of box stuff, followed by quite a few cartridges on the bottom. They're usually stacked about four cartridges deep. And then on the bottom here we've got the Lilac Wars big box version with the Rumble Pack. Moving around to here we've got the 8-bit section, so there's all the all the NES stuff. We've got quite a lot of box NES stuff. And then down to the unboxed stuff, so we've got Zelda, Mega Man 2, some good cartridges there. Of course to our biggest section, which is the Sega 8-bit and 16-bit section, on the top half we've got all the Mega Drive games, all the better type, well most of the ones are along the top of the better titles. So That's uh, a Japanese converter there, isn't it? Yeah. That's quite cool, you don't often see them. Especially cool. not in their box. <laughs> now, how much is that, Martin? Uh, that's only five pounds. That's a fiver for a Mega Drive converter. That's that's a really good price. Really good price. A boxed Mega Drive two six button controller and an action replay. And then we've got two big long shelves full of Mega Drive games at about another about another two hundred upstairs that I can't fit out on the shelves. Mostly the same same games or rubbishy sports games, but. We try and keep them away because not many people want them, but if you ever came in and you wanted a sports game, I'm sure we've got plenty of them. Down here to Master System. Master System is, we've got probably, I don't think you'll find anywhere with more Master System choice than us because I actually collected every single game for the Master System and they ended up all coming into here, all, all 278 of them, so obviously I haven't got every single game down here and I've sold quite a few, but... But yeah, we've got uh, a huge choice in Master System games and probably about another 150 to 200 upstairs as well. Even some card games, Master System card games, that's awesome. That's quality. We're on to here. Just a few things on the wall here. We've got a box Super Game Boy at the top for £10. We've got this which came in, which... Uh, I mean, it's, if you're into World of Warcraft or Starcraft or anything, we've got some, it's a limited edition Blizzard artwork. They're all like oh, wow. prints, shiny prints. Uh, now that's impressive. See some of them open up into. I don't. I, I really haven't. I mean, I'm, I'm not a big Blizzard fan. I don't play MMO RPGs, so I'm not really sure what that's worth to anyone. But um, I'm sure to someone who's a collector. Oh yeah, definitely they'll want that. A further down, Fantastic. probably the, one of the rarest things we have in the shop at the moment is this Super Famicom. All boxed as it came. Be careful with it. <laughs> if I can ever open it by being careful with it. You got that one? There yeah. you go, mate. There we go. Oh, that's brilliant. It's no yellowing whatsoever. No yellowing. That is a quality console. That is in really good condition. Even the pads, that's really good. As we turn around this way, there's a, there's a box zapper there, and then there's a, a PS2 section, which we've got, again, I've just had to get rid of 200 of my PS2 games off in a big lot because I just just didn't have enough, I didn't have enough room for them. So we've got two bookcases full of PS2 here, and a few of the better titles on the top. 
a few of the Xbox, original Xbox games there that didn't fit on the shelf as I commented. Very short on Mega CD games, I do have a few more up in the stock room. They're not all Road Avenger and Cobra Command, but... <laughs> and then down to the Saturn area, where we again have a few, a few good titles like the Resident Evil and the Duke Nukem, but... We get stuff in all the time, and a lot of the good stuff goes quite quickly because... You know, there's not a lot of places around here, not that I know of, a lot of places in the country where you can get this sort of thing apart from the internet, so... Then we have a, I don't know why it's down here, away from the PS1, but the PS1 Beat Mania as well, boxed with a turntable. An arcade stick for Xbox 360. And then the original Xbox games, which is what I'm actually collecting myself now, so... I should get quite a variety of those in, being as I'm collecting them at home myself. Not every uh, good game is expensive. Alien Hominin's a great game. Four pounds. That is a good game. Go across to here, we've got Xbox 360 game. We've got some new and sealed ones at the top. We do sell brand new games as they come out, but we usually keep them closer to the counter to avoid theft. Um, right at the bottom there, we've got HD DVDs for the HD DVD player for the Xbox. 360. There you go, so if you have an HD DVD player, there is still somewhere on earth you can get the discs from, that's cool. Up to PS3, and the best titles are going on the top. And then down to the Blu-rays for the PS3. And down to the boring, in my opinion, PSP. Yeah, I don't um, think many people are going to disagree with you there. And then UMDs along the bottom to play. So we've got all the video formats for we don't sell DVDs themselves because I want to be a game shop and you know not, not some uh, sort of I don't know what you call yeah, second hand shop but That's fair enough. So and then uh, up to the Wii stuff. Got a fair few decent titles for the Wii. Yeah, there's a lot of Wii games here. That's cool. We had about twelve about about a month ago, but after Christmas because we've been cleaned out, but then then uh Got some more in again. GameCube, something that I, I, I struggle to get big amount, big amounts of games for a, for a decent price, and people didn't, don't generally bring many in to trade in because not many re people really had a GameCube. But yeah, it didn't exactly do brilliantly. No, I think maybe quite partly to do with the fact that they have a DVD drive where the others did at the time. It seemed to matter to people, but to me, I want a game system for a games console. So yeah. Uh, a minty mint inside Sega Mega Drive 2 red one. I know X Style showed some interest in, the, in this uh, item. Inside, everything is in it. In its, uh, see, everything's all. Uh, oh wow! All, it cardboard. looks like all the little bits of cardboard are in there and everything. Yeah, which is not easy with this console. So manuals, the, the pads boxed. Inside. Oh wow! How much is that for? Wow, that's thirty-five, 35 pounds. pounds. That's fantastic. TV screen bank where we've got games playing all the day, people come in and have a go, you know, we don't, we don't charge anyone for that, it's just nice to have a bit of a community here. Um, we've got a box master system too, one of Matt's favourite things. Oh, you have your own <laughs> box of lies, check that out everyone, <laughs> box of lies. How much would people have to pay for a box of lies? Uh, for a box of lies, I don't know, ten pounds. Ten pounds <laughs> for the interactive. That actually is a good price. <laughs> Got some nice, nice, good condition consoles in there. A good box for N64, a good box for PS1, an Altered Beast Mega Driver, and then the action set which just came in the other day, which is in real good condition. That is in really good condition. And the Dreamcast box, which is in reasonable condition as well. Wow, there's even the box for the Saturn's arcade wheel there, that's cool. And a game, and a GameCube. Here we've got two of our regulars, I'm going to go with FIFA. We've got the worst... Alright guys, say hi. Worst game ever for Adam Fogg. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie the Legend Killer who always wins at football. What are you guys playing at the minute, guys? FIFA 11 -0. Yep. Yeah, of course. Who's winning? Oh, it's a draw. Uh, We're both just as crap as each other. <laughs> we'll come back around right here, we've got a PS1 section. Yeah. Again, I had about, I've got about another 300 PS1 games, I've just had to get rid of some because it was just, there were just too many and a lot of titles that weren't going to sell. So, you know, we've, we've got some really good titles, we've got Final Fantasies and Resident Evil, Silent Hills, so 
<coughs> we definitely got a lot of choice for the PS1 user. And we've got the, the Dreamcast, we haven't got so many Dreamcast games, but they didn't really make that many as compared to a PS1. These ones here were just not good enough condition cases, so I took the, the manuals and the... As is this always out. the case with Dreamcast games. About 27 copies of Choo Choo Rocket. There you go, if anyone out there is looking for 27 copies of Choo Choo Rocket, you now know where to come. Yeah, if you're looking for 28, sorry I can't help you, but... We've got uh, original Game Boy games, Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance games, and a small section of one pound games, for, which has mostly been cleared out at the moment. By me. And then some more Game Boy games down here, and some more Game Boy games, and then some box Game Boy games, and some box Game Boy Color games, and some box Game Boy Advance games. Down to loose cartridge DS games and box D DS games. Just Excellent. turn around to here. We've got our more expensive items in the uh, in the in the um, class cabinet. We've got PlayStation Move starter kit. Uh, we've got a couple of DSs in. Game Boys boxed, nice copy of Shenmue, and a collector's edition of Fable. Well, I don't know what this stuff's in here for. It's just that it didn't have a home. But there's a few Spectrum games. I do have hundreds and hundreds of Spectrum games that I just don't have anywhere to put them. I'm waiting for the right person to come along and say, oh, I collect Spectrum and they can get themselves a great deal. But, um, Super Nintendo Pro Action Replay as well, and a couple of the old handhelds at the bottom, along with a couple of Amiga games. We've got the uh, Caveman game and the Scramble game, and then a couple of uh, obscure Amiga games. My nicely decorated cut, cut, um, counter here. You have to love the Space Invaders graphics. My wife oh, did it cool. and realises, wait a minute, the ship should be under the uh, <laughs> under the bases. But, but we'll forgive her because she's done a great job. She did the Pac-Man around the screens as well. She pretty much decorated this whole place out. You probably don't want to look around the camera because it's a mess because we get so many games in all the time. But we've got Mario up there. Um, and of course, a healthy supply of gamer fuel. You have crisps and drinks, gamer and fuel. And chocolate. And chocolate, there you go. Gamer <laughs> fuel. This is where we tend to keep our sealed games, but for some reason at the moment, rubbishy football games have been uh, stored here for one pound. But yeah, that's really, uh, that's really the shot. You know? So I'm here on the sofa in Game Link now with Martin. Um, just to ask him a few questions and uh, find out more about how what you see around you happened. So um, before you decided to open your own business, Martin, what were you actually doing? Uh, well, I was working in Sainsbury's, but uh, yeah, I was uh, I was working in Sainsbury's. And I was playing retro games, and I was buying retro games at car boot sales, and uh, I just thought, um, you know, uh, after a while, I was making a bit of money on eBay selling games, and I yeah. thought, well, I've got to make this decision because it's taken up a lot of my time trying to find these games. So do I go with Sainsbury's and just carry on with you know that the boring job of on a till scanning things all day, or do I go for something that I really love and have a passion for, and that is games? And so I decided to take a chance with it. Okay, cool. So how did you get started? I mean, I'm assuming you're not super rich. So how did you um, you know one day just go right here we go here we go with the shop? Yeah, well basically I started on eBay, sold a few things. I got lucky, I got a good lot on, on a, a car boot sale for 30 quid, which uh, was a load of box Super Nintendo stuff, including Terra Enigma, made, made me about £600. You know, so basically, the business was started from 20 quid, really, that, I, that or 30 quid that I spent on that lot. Okay, then cool. that, that money was invested into more games and into more games. And okay, then... so it's good for people to know that, you know, it's one of those things that if they really want to go for it and do it, exactly. there's no reason we can't start to see loads of indie shops like this just start to return and get them back on the high street, which would be a great thing, I'm sure, for, for everyone. Definitely, yeah. Um, so, as a gamer, you must have a favourite system and maybe a few favourite games. What, what's that? I love I love the 16-bit era, you know, I love Super Nintendo, although the stuff's just a bit too expensive for me to be a company yeah. collector of. But, uh, so, for, for me and the Mega Drive, the games look great on the shelf. Co um, currently collecting original Xbox, I previously collected the whole Master System collection, barring Smurfs 2, I had to get in it a uh, sort of pirate copy of Smurfs 2, but apart from that, there were, there were 277 games, I had them all. They're all, like I say, they're all in the shop now, but because uh, I wanted to sell them as a collection, but collectors want to collect, so they, yeah. no one wanted to buy as a collection. And what's the one item that you're really going after at the minute? Why is it more than anything else you'd like to see someone bring through that door so that you could buy for yourself for the collection? I suppose that would be Steel Battalion on Steel the Steel Battalion, take, take me before. on. 
I've had it in before, like on his latest box before I was a collector, and now you know that. I suppose that's the holy grail for anyone who's, who's collecting. It is an Xbox. absolutely fantastic game, not just for anyone that's into the original Xbox, just for anyone that is interested in something completely different. I don't think there's another gaming experience like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to get any game that uh, says only on Xbox at the top. You know, things yeah. that. They're a bit unique to that console, not stuff like Call of Duty, Conflict, Desert Storm, stuff like that. It doesn't interest me really. I like the kooky, cartoony type of games, you know, that, that, that remind me of the retro times, I suppose. Okay, cool. Um, well, I think that's pretty much all we've uh, all all there is. But is there any message you'd like to give for YouTube? Yes, please come to the shop. You know, come for the day. We've got snacks. We've got we've got games going on all day here. You know, you can you can come down. You can have some fun. And, and before you know it, the day will be over, and you know. You'd have had a good time. Even if you haven't got a lot of money to spend, that, that doesn't bother me. Just come down, have fun, meet other retro gamers. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that sounds like a really good thing to put out there. And it might be a really good idea if uh, a few of us from the community just tried to arrange something like that. That'd be really cool because it'd be a great place to meet up, uh, get plenty of the community here, have a good time. Yeah, and yeah. I hope you're right for the summer. Yeah, we'll try and sort something out for the summer. I'll, be, yeah. I'll definitely come down for that. Yeah. That'd be great. All right, Martin, thanks for the interview and thanks, thanks for the great tour of the shop. Yeah. I'll see you later. Thanks, right, well, uh, as you can see, I'm now back from Spalding. It's uh, 11 o'clock and I'm very tired. Um, but just before I go to bed, I thought I'd just show you some of the stuff I bought from GameLink. Um, so that's what's on the table here. Let's just take a look at some of that. Right, so uh, as you can see, there's some Master System stuff there. Some PS2 games at the back, Xbox game, Tony Hawk's Underground 2, and a GameCube game, that's World Tour, it's some kind of scootery game, it actually looked quite cool, I'm sure it isn't, but it looks cool. Some NES games, Game Boy games, N64, SNES, uh, this is a, some kind of converter for playing Japanese and American SNES games on the... UK PAL Super Nintendo and uh, Martin actually gave me that for free because it's not working properly so I'll see if I can fix that the flip top Sonic and Knuckles cart a couple of Mega CD games to boost that collection a couple of Dreamcast games including Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2 which I've wanted for ages and just not picked up and I thought for £3 that's a fantastic deal um, and here you can see I also got a Philips CDI 450 uh, I've been wanting to pick up one of those for a little while. I think the 450 is one of the better CDI systems because it has the digital video system built in, for example, and stuff like that. A very good system. And Martin made me an amazing deal on that. He actually gave me it with all these games, uh, some controls, a Mad Dog McCree gun, uh, just for a fantastic price. I was really, really impressed with that, so cheers. And the other console I picked up was this Amstrad GX4000 here, which is a system I've never played before. And uh, that was actually a birthday present from Martin, which uh, I didn't expect at all. That was really cool for him to give me a birthday present like that. Uh, you didn't have to do that, mate, but thank you. It's uh, always good to get a birthday present like that. So, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to getting stuck into some of this stuff over the next couple of days. So that is my, well, I suppose this is technically a pickups, really, from GameLink. Uh, it's definitely a shop I recommend you all go go to if you're in that area ever. Uh, Martin's a great guy. He knows a lot about what he's doing. And, yeah, go see him. Go check it out. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, I know it's been very different to what we normally do. And next week we will, of course, be getting back to something a little bit more what you're used to. I will do a console review. Um, but I just wanted to say before I go that Shops like GameLink in Spalding are, really are a dying breed. There just aren't many of them out there anymore. There's not a lot of indie game shops about. So I do think it's quite important that you know we all try and help them out and try and support them. And like GameLink, there are a few out there where the prices are just fantastic. Um, so really there's no excuse why we can't support these kinds of people. A lot of the stuff that I picked up here, I couldn't have got through the normal channels for anywhere near the same price, you know, anywhere like eBay, when you throw postage and stuff on top, I wouldn't have got these kind of deals. Um, so yeah, find your local uh, retro game shop and support it. And obviously if you're ever in an area where you think there might be another, have a look around and just support those little businesses and show them that we can help. Um, I think that's it from me really, guys. I'm absolutely shattered, so I'm going to now get some sleep. 
Uh, don't forget to check out the show's Twitter page down there for uh, any news about the show. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Catch you next week on Replay Retro.